films and television about art used to be very romantic. It was best if you could get the artist on the beach and then have him gaze soulfully out to sea as if he's looking for inspiration. Girls, would you mind? Thanks. But he shouldn't look too lonely. Let's have the dog. That's it. Up, music. Well, it's not like it used to be, and it probably never was. Most artists work in places like Brooklyn, in the middle of a clutter that can look and sound a lot like the world outside. They work hard, and they work long, and sometimes they laugh at themselves. But mostly they live and think and make art, and every two years, the Whitney Museum of American Art shows some of the best of it. In New York, it's called Biennial Time. Openings are great for seeing people, but then we come back and we begin to see the work. Veteran biennial watchers may walk through it once just to get the feel of it. Is it hotter or cooler than 85? More safe or more daring? More serious or more trendy? Is it an accurate report? And then all of that suddenly seems unimportant as the individual works begin to speak to us. the great familiar voices that continue to astonish or disturb, and other younger presences, persuasive enough to open a door in our minds. This year, they seem to knock a little more gently before entering. The overall impression of the exhibition was a, a quieter one because there weren't so many conflicting um, or competing talents within one space, uh, for instance. Um, there was a lot more breathing room, and I think the overall tone of it was a more meditative tone. There was such a change in, in art practice around 1980, and so many things happened in such rapid succession in the early 80s that I think we're still catching up to those things now, and there's this sort of filtering um, process going on uh, where artists are, are reflecting on that tumultuous change that occurred in the early 80s and uh, sifting out what's important for them. Barbara Kruger's presence in the last three biennials testifies to the growing impact of her word picture statements. In her conscious emphasis on the commodity status of an art object, she invites viewers to examine the relationship of visual pleasures to social issues. In the view of critic Robert Pincus Witten, the focus of some artists in recent decades on art as commodity can be traced to their sense that modernist art, as a model for an ideal utopian society, had been an impossible dream. What has happened is that the, the work of art is being perceived as, um, as its reduction to commodity. Since, the ironically, the class that sentimentally preserves the myth that a work of art can code utopian signifiers is the bourgeoisie, is the middle class itself. So, what we came upon in, the, in this, the dilemma of postmodernism was the fact that the recognition that a work of art no longer coded utopian signifiers and that, that, it was, and that the modern work of art was reduced to commodity in the sense that all things that ger are germane to the bourgeoisie are reduced to its, low, its common denominator, which is its commodity status. Younger artists, recognizing this irony, began to make works of art from the outset that would announce itself as pure commodity. They accepted the irony, and so the work, the modernist work of art, nominally a postmodernist work, began to look like 
commodity from the outset and asserted itself in terms of things that we associate with commodity, gloss, technical production, refinement of technique, coldness, seriality, reprographic, infinitely re reducible, reduction of the presence of the hand, the consciousness of the presence of the machine, and even someone as expressionistic, say, as Judy Pfaff, that is extremely um, passionate in her, uh, in her nominal expressive sculpture or relief work or environmental installations, even her work is now has the nature of stuff which looked like they were somehow mass-produced and cheap, even though the premise was still unique, original, and uh, expressionistic. The idea of doing something for the Whitney, special for the Whitney, seemed like a great idea. I, I now don't know if it was <laughs> a great idea, but I was very excited about it. The title of it is NYC BQE, New York City, Brooklyn Queens Expressway. And it really is, to my part, almost like documentary footage of traveling from my house in the city to my studio here and sort of almost freeze frame pictures along the way. The piece was supposed to be seen as just this real flow or, you know, s stream of images and uh, that I thought looked best walking by it, not, not standing in front of it. And it was probably a problem in the piece that everybody had the feeling they couldn't, that's one of the complaints I heard, they can't see it. And I thought, well, you're looking at it wrong. You're trying to look at it like it's an object. And if you relaxed a little bit and just looked at it the way you usually look at sh shops as you go by, or which is, you know, you sort of notice them and see them, but you don't uh, fix on them. So I, it, it isn't um, a pointing at that stuff saying, isn't that funny or isn't that curious. It's really th about the life here. And uh, that's a point that I'm very keen on making, that it's not, I'm not poking fun or using it. It's really in the work in a way that anything else would be in the work. It's not a separate aspect or a, a message about middle class, lower middle class, lower class, upper class.